Hey, what's up guys? It's Graphic Phoenix back with another video today. And today is May 7th, the seventh day of May Madness. Today is actually a live stream, so hello to you, those of you that are live. We are talking about the best beginner dart frogs. So I want to mention a couple things. May Madness is the day where May Madness is basically the month where I make a video every single day for the whole month. Today, uh, Sundays, I'm pretty sure are going to be my live stream days. So, uh, welcome to those of you that are live. If you guys don't know, there is a super chat enabled. So if you have a burning question or you just want to donate to support me, then uh, there's a little kind of money symbol right below your chat. And that is basically uh, to... You can donate anywhere from like two to five hundred dollars. Obviously, I uh, I would appreciate it. But uh, those are for for those of you that are looking to absolutely get your answer qu or your question answered, and to have me acknowledge you and give you a shout out. Then that is one way to do it. Is this a picture? This is live. This is live. Uh, so, with that being said, I think we can get started. Today we're talking about the best beginner dart frogs. Hey, thanks, NCAM. Uh, yeah, it's been a pretty solid morning here. My phone's already a million degrees, but, you know. So I'm going to, how this live stream's going to go is I'm going to be checking for the Super Chats just in case I happen to miss one because I am actually on mobile. And then uh, later on, I'll open up to questions and stuff for you guys to ask me. But right now, I'm just going to be talking purely information because um, that's what I want to get started with. And then I'll talk to the chat in just a bit. So I am going to get started here. So right off the bat, before we get too deep into this, I need to dispel the myth that uh, a lot of people think when they're first getting into dart frogs, a lot of people think, okay, dart frogs are, uh, are not... In how many minutes? It'll probably be about 10 minutes before I open it up to chat. Um, or before I really pay attention to chat. But, uh, I'm just going to spray these guys so hopefully they'll come out. That's the sound that you hear. I'll let you guys know that this is, this is something that is completely and totally, these guys are harmless in captivity. In the wild, they basically eat ants and beetles, which actually allow them to synthesize the toxins that they have. So when you're doing stuff like this, yes, this is live. <laughs> when you're having things like toxins, or, or when they're eating those beetles, they actually can synthesize the toxins. However, in captivity, we feed them mainly fruit flies and, and various other things. It looks like the thumbnail to me. Uh, maybe refresh your page, buddy. Um, you don't see the dollar. If you're on mobile, it doesn't show up. You have to be on either Android or on, uh, the computer. Yes, I will talk about the ventilation, but I'm going to talk about their care first. I have some notes just under here so I don't miss anything. Uh, basically... Uh, for the top four, there's really top four, uh, like, best beginner dart frogs. There's there's three that you kind of hear about all the time, and then there's one that's not quite as, re like, as often recommended, but I think it is definitely a solid starter. So, the first three, I, I wish I had pictures here to show you guys, but unfortunately I don't. Um, the first three are the Dendrobates species, or genus, I guess. We have Dendrobates tinctorius, Dendrobates leucomelas, and... Dendrobates erratus. Now one that you don't hear all the time is actually Phyllobates. A lot of Phyllobates genus are really good for these uh, kind of beginner dart frog setups. Um, and that is that is what we're looking at here is a erratus tank. You can see here this is the tank itself. So we have 18 by 18 by 18 for the Erratus. Now, I guess since I'm already talking about Erratus and they're sitting right in front of me, I will be talking about them first. Erratus are a lot of times regarded as shy frogs. However, if you have a fairly decently planted tank and you also have and you also have uh, enough space for them, like in my 12 by 12 by 18 that I had them set up before this, then 
He is... Uh, then you have, basically... Then you have... Uh, what am I talking about? Sorry, guys. Totally lost my train of thought. Chat's distracting me. Uh, basically, you have a large tank for them. These guys need a minimum of an 18 by 18 by 18 Exoterra. Now, I was keeping them in a 12 by 12 by 18 tall, and unfortunately, they weren't breeding. They were doing fine. They were eating. They were doing that, but that that kind of stigma, I guess, of that, oh, they're super shy frogs, really was true when they were in a small tank. Now, I saw the female when I put her in the tank and when I basically took her out. I put her in the 18 by 18 by, or the 12 by 12 by 18, and when I took her out was the next time I saw her. They were in there for like six months and I saw her maybe twice. Now, since moving into a much, much larger tank, this is the 18 by 18 by 18 Exoterra, you guys can see here, they've been doing fantastic. Hello to the, you guys in the chat. I'm I'm talking information first, and then I'll and then I'll open it up to questions here. So basically, um, they really require a larger tank. These guys are not the biggest species of dart frogs, but they do like a lot of space. So. With that being said, uh, we can move on from the general care of Erotus to something like the Tinctorius. Now, Tinctorius are a larger species. Um, they are minimum size. I would keep a trio is in an 18 by 18 by 18. And ideally, if you have a space, you do a 24 long by 18 by 18. That is kind of the minimum that I'd recommend for a trio. Just, uh, like, when I'm talking with this, I just want you guys to know that this is very general care. Like, basically the only differing things. And then after, I'm going to go over, like, their actual general care uh, for most dart frogs. Um, now, we've kind of went over Azuri or uh, Tinctorius. The Lucamelos are the bumblebee dart frog. I'm sure some of you... Um, have heard of them or have seen them if you're into dart frogs at all they basically require again a minimum of 18 by 18 by 18 for a trio or you could keep like a group of five or so in an 18 by 18 by 24 tall i noticed that the leucomelis actually tend to climb a lot more than the than the uh erotus and tinctorius but i mean obviously your experience can vary so those are the minimum that I'd recommend for those guys. Uh, I saw... Oh, hey, Kaylin, thanks for the $2 super chat. I always support you. Keep up the great work. Thanks. I really appreciate it. I hope Kyle can make it in here. I really appreciate the $2. Thank you very much. Um, Ronnie asked, how many do you need for a... Or how big of a tank do you need for one? Honestly, I would keep it the same size. Like, I wouldn't go any smaller than... At very, very minimum, a 12 by 12 by 18 for just one. But even ideally, you'd have just one in an 18 by 18 by 18. Did I make a poll yet? No, Arib. I, I'll be talking about that later on. Um, I actually need to find a... Uh, I need to grab my computer with the pictures on it. So, to show you guys. <laughs> um, now, the Phylobates, Terribilis. Um, there's several... There's, wow. See you guys? I... My, my videos are so well edited, you don't even know I stumble. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, Defiobilis terribilis are the largest and the most toxic species of dart frog in the, uh, in the wild. Obviously, like I said in the beginning, in captivity, dart frogs are completely harmless, so do not worry. Um, these guys are large terrestrial frogs, and for a trio, I recommend a minimum of a 20 gallon long. That is bare minimum. I wouldn't go much smaller than that. If I was you, I'd go with like the 24 by 18 by 12 Exoterra, or 24 by 18 by 18 Exoterra for, uh, three dart frogs. Uh, for the three Terribilis. But... With that being said, there's also several other species of Phylobates. The bicolor, um, I, the other ones are escaping me. I just saw the bicolor, but uh, those are awesome species. Unfortunately, where I live, the Phylobates terribilis are actually illegal, but uh, we can still have these beautiful frogs. I don't know if you guys can see him. I'm trying to zoom in there. There we go. 
Uh, these guys are beautiful frogs, and I would definitely recommend looking into them. The Phyllobates also differ because they get so large, they can actually eat crickets and the occasional wax worm, uh, like once or twice a month, no more than that, because they are very fatty. But uh, they do actually eat crickets, and they love crickets, to be completely honest. So, now that I've kind of talked about the general care for these guys, uh, for all the different species of frogs, I wish the female and the, ma the other male were out. But you can see there, strawberry begonia and some moss. Um... Here we go, back to the back to the frog. Uh, the general care. Now, I will be making a separate video about care for dart frogs, but I just wanted to talk about general care for these guys in this video because I figured what would be a uh, a care video without having any care. So, a lot of people here are fairly familiar with dart frogs, I hope. This is true for most uh, tree frogs as well, is uh, you want to set up a vivarium. Honestly, I I don't see the point in keeping frogs if you're going to set up like a 10 gallon tank with no live plants, a little water dish and a cocoa hut. To me, that's just not what they're all about. For me, it's all about what you see here. Hold on, I'm just going to try and zoom out. Hmm. It's very difficult. There we go. For me, it's what you see here. Like, you can see all over my room. Uh, you can see over here with the real Calubre, over there. Even with the babies up top there. For me, it's all about live plants. Um, it's all about recreating the rainforest. Now, obviously, this is not anywhere close to what the rainforest would actually be. But it's got live plants. It's got a cleanup crew. It's got places to lay eggs. It's... It's really about as good as you can get in something this size. So, with that being said, that's kind of the first tip. I strongly recommend having an actual vivarium so you can keep them in there. Uh, the temperatures for these guys are about anywhere from the low 70s to the low 80s. Now, much higher than probably 84, 85 will actually stress these guys out and could potentially kill them, uh, which is kind of the hard point with some of the other dart frogs, is just they're very sensitive to temperature changes, which I can talk about in just a minute. But uh, that's... That's kind of their temperature range. Now, UVB can be beneficial for these guys, absolutely. Especially for the larger frogs like the Tinctorius and the uh, and the Phyllobates terribilis. But that also requires that you have at least part of a screen mesh for the, uh, for the tank. Because you want to have enough, uh, like, glass cuts out completely all total UV. It cuts it down to basically zero. So... Uh, you need to have a screen portion of your tank to have a uh, UVB light in there for them. Now, they don't need a ton of UV. Simply like a 5.0 UVB through screen would be totally fine for these guys. Again, not much research has been done on this, but uh, it's coming more into the public that UVB is really beneficial for all lizards, not just the diurnal species, but actually the nocturnal species as well. So take that for what you will. So what what's the lifespan on these guys? Honestly, it's kind of hard to say. I know there's, uh, or I'm pretty sure there was a, a group of 24-year-old uh, Dendrobates tinctorius azurius still breeding. So they can live a long time. I would set the range around 10 to 20 years. I don't really know that, obviously, simply because, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been keeping these guys for what? I think these guys are like five or six years old, though, uh, or maybe a little bit less, like four years old. But, uh, they're still doing really well, so <laughs> hopefully they don't croak and, uh, no pun intended, I promise, in the next, uh, couple years here. So primary primary feeding for these guys, I actually have a fruit fly culture right here, is the Hydei. So the uh, melon or the uh, hyd Hydra. What's their? I totally forgot their genus name. Whatever. Regardless. Um, Drosophilia? I think that's what it is. Hydei. So these are the larger species of uh, fruit flies. These guys, I mean, 
They're great. They do well. You can culture them super, super easily. And you can also mix up their diet with stuff that's varied like uh, bean beetles or bean weevils, whatever you want to call it. You can add springtail or springtails, isopods. Um, pinhead crickets do great for them. There's plenty of things you can feed these guys to have a varied diet. Uh, yes, Ronnie, these are flightless fruit flies. Um, if I open it, they'll just crawl out. They're not going to fly. Uh, so that's kind of nice. They're easy to keep in. You can fruit fly poo for your terrarium. Unfortunately, I don't do that because I, I've just never really tried, to be honest. So, yeah. Those are the things that you got to mention. And, unfortunately, just feeding fruit flies alone really doesn't provide all the nutrients and stuff they need. So I use a combination of these two products right here. Uh, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but this is DendroCare. This stuff I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend uh, using for your dart frogs. It's pretty readily available. I know I can find it in Canada, so I'm sure you guys can find it in the States. It's called DendroCare. Uh, I mix it every time with feeding, and it lasts for quite some time, so you don't really need to worry about that. Uh, kind of, I guess, like spending 25 bucks, because this, this container here is how big? I don't even think it says. Yeah, it doesn't say how big it is, but this was 25 bucks. So, I mean, it's not cheap, but it's definitely necessary for the health of your frogs. And then I also use this Rapashi Vitamin A supplement to supplement breeding and uh, provide a vitamin A for the eggs because the vitamin A in the DendroCare is probably enough, but I strongly recommend that you guys pick some of this up as well. Now, I dust this. When I first started, because I hadn't done it for, I mean, all the time that I was keeping frogs, I did it two times a week and I feed three times a week, but now I just do it once a week. So one out of every three feedings, they get that. I think I've covered most of the stuff that I have on my, oh, ventilation. You guys, you guys always have questions about that fan or uh, I actually have ventilation in the Pumilio tank. These should be turning on right away as well, but I have ventilation. Uh, I don't really want to open this, but I will because I'm stupid. Uh, I have ventilation all the way up there, you guys can see, over there. Putting you guys back down. Sorry about that. A little shaky for a second. Um, the ventilation is, it's confusing, honestly. I just have, this is a PC fan, and I have it rigged up to like an old cell phone charger. Now my friend gave me a tip that I've never actually done before. I've always just found chargers around and just cut them and rewired them. You can actually see the, re the rewiring back there. You can see there's little white strands. That's where I rewire, we, <laughs> you'd think it wouldn't be a tongue twister, but it totally is, rewired them. And, uh, yeah, that's where they ended up. So this one, you can do it a couple different ways. This one has a fine enough cord to where I can just close it like this. And the cord presses in between there, um, like in between the crack and the exoterra. However, I know sometimes that's smaller. So what you can actually do is either wire it through your glass top or make a very tiny drill hole in your glass top and run it through there. That's really all that you need to do. So, uh, they sell computer fans. Uh, maybe. If they do, that would be awesome. What are those yellow blobs? What? Um, yeah, but I think that's basically all I had to talk about uh, for this. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, we've been going for 20 minutes, so I don't want to keep this going too much longer, maybe about 10 minutes more. What I'm going to do is ask uh, a Reeb, actually, you know what? I am going to, what do you guys want to look at right now? Um, because I want to transition to potential merch designs. So I was talking on Instagram yesterday with my Instagram followers and I showed them the uh, the t-shirt designs that I might be making. Do you have tree frogs? No, I don't. Uh, and at this time, I will be taking questions from chat, so I will be paying attention to chat as well. Um, why don't I show you guys... I'll put you... Oh, 
I guess I'll announce on the live stream that I actually did name the Ackies, the baby Ackies. The baby's Ack, the baby Ackies names are Daisy for the uh, for the female and Groot for the male. Because in honor of Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy 2, uh, I had to do it. It was it was not an option. Can we get a monitor shirt? There was one planned, but it didn't turn out as well as excuse me as well as that I had hoped. So there will be no monitor design at first, but there's some other cool stuff that I'm going to show you guys. Um, Arib, if you're in chat right now, would you be able to make a straw poll? And then on the video after this, if you guys are watching the replay, I'll ask you to go up right now and... Uh, or after I show you the shirts. Sorry, you guys. There we go. I'll focus you on Daisy. I'll ask you guys to... Um... Sorry, I'm going to... Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is pretty funny, for those of you that were wondering. Did I miss any super chats, you guys? I don't think I did. But I'll check here right away. Strawberry shortcakes tonight. I guess I'm sitting on the ground for this one. <laughs> ground stream. What is a straw poll? Uh, it's it's a. Uh, don't worry about it. I'll I'll get it. Okay. Sorry about this, you guys. I'm gonna pull up chat on my computer here. Ooh, very bad connection. No. Rip, fam. Why a very bad connection? Whoa, what the hell? Okay. So it's saying very bad connection. I'm going to bring you guys back up to... Yeah. Very bad connection. Come on, come back. Come on. Come on. Is it back? Ooh. Kaylin, if you can hear me right now, that would be sweet. See, the second I open my laptop, my my phone just eats it, so. Sorry about that, you guys. I hope it's back. Or at least more or less back. It is back? Okay, good. Good, good. I set you guys back up pretty high, so I'm going to do this really quick. Um, let's go. Let's go. Uh, Areeb, if you're still in chat right now, I'm going to... See, it still says very bad connection. Are you guys still here? It's back? Okay. Good. Yeah, now it's back to normal. So, um, deer frogs call? Yes, they certainly do. So, what I'm going to do right now is create a st straw poll. Areeb, I'm going to post it in chat. And I really want you, after I show all the designs, to repost it once uh, everybody's seen them. So, give me one sec here. How's everybody doing? I know I lost like most of my viewers because I went down there for a minute, unfortunately. I hope you guys got to see the Aki though. Yeah, I do. I have tadpoles right now. Just give me one sec, you guys. I'm trying to uh, trying to make this work here. Okay. All right. Chat. There we go. 
Okay. There's the straw poll. Areeb, can you please repaste that when I need you to? And have I gotten any super chats? Nope, just the one from Kalen. Again, thanks Kalen for the super chat. I appreciate it. For those of you looking to support the stream, that is one way of doing so. If you so choose, obviously, you definitely don't have to donate any money. I appreciate it, and you get a little bit of a shout-out, though, so whatever it's worth. Okay. Okay. Sorry, you guys. Oh, that's my email. Um, I'll bring you guys down so you can see my screen a bit better in just a moment. I just need to pull up the uh, the designs here. Here's one. This is two. Okay. All right. So I just pulled them all off my email. Yeah, I'm pulling up the designs. Arib, once I show all the designs, if you could just copy paste that link and just spam the hell out of it once it's or don't spam the hell out of it. Like, put it down like four or five times. Okay, can you guys see my whole screen? Yep. I would have loved to give more, but I'm unemployed, so... Oh, don't worry about it, Kalen. You support the stream. That I really appreciate it. Okay, so this is the first design, whenever it opens here. I wish I could do it on my actual laptop. There it is. So that's design number one. I'm sorry. I wish I was doing this on my laptop so I could just share my screen. But, uh... Uh... Adios. Um... Yeah, so this is design one. So I don't know how well you guys can really see that, but it's kind of as big as I can get it. That is design number one. So, let me know what you guys think in the chat. You love, okay, okay. So design number two was actually the favorite of the Instagram stream last night. So design number two is this one right here. This one's kind of hard to see, but basically what it is, is a chameleon like a skeleton chameleon so that's what that one looks like too meh <laughs> yeah yeah I know some people really like this some people didn't you never made a live stream well welcome one was better. Okay, so you see, you guys like number one better. That's good to know. And so if you guys like number one better, you'll probably like number three the best. And this is number three. That is showing up really weird colors, but... That's number three right there. I had a... I had a monitor one design, but it didn't turn out as well as I had hoped. So there are a couple more designs potentially coming in the future, but that will be a different video that I'm going to make. Yep. Okay, Arib, yeah, you can spam it a couple times. So I want you guys to go to that straw poll right now, and if you're watching the stream later, uh, like the replay of the stream, I'm going to leave a link at the top of your screen right now, and uh, you guys can go click which ones you would actually like to buy. Now, these would probably cost about $20, $23, $4 for, uh, sh for the shirt and, uh, and then whatever shipping costs. What I'm planning to do is... See, this one's all weird. What I'm planning to do is actually have 
uh, a couple more designs made and also um, have it so that I might do all the shipping within Canada. Like I'll get it printed at maybe a local t-shirt company or whatever and then ship out from Canada and then to more and then the states I would use probably Teespring. Can I show the other options? Yeah, I, I'll put all three on screen right now. One, two. Okay, uh, and this is number one. I know this is super ghetto, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. There's all three. So number one, number two, number three. Yeah, the, the order is from the right part of your screen to the left part of your screen. UK shipping. Um, obviously, shipping is going to be more expensive to the UK, but it's definitely a possibility. Um, I was actually told by one of my... We're going at 30 minutes here, so I'm going to wrap it up pretty quick. Um, what I was going to do, and what one of my buddies suggested to me, is actually make a poster. So how many of you guys would like to buy a poster from me? Maybe for like $15 signed with like a custom message or something from me uh, to you guys. How many would take that over a t-shirt? Poster. Yeah, say poster in the chat if you want a poster. And then after this, I'll wrap it up, actually. Because it is getting hot as shit in my room right now. Whew. Poster. So poster is pretty common. So aren't you guys... I'm going to be wrapping up the stream right here. Uh, I want you guys to leave in the comment section of the video, not just, um, not in the, not in the live stream. I mean, those of you that are here, uh, I prefer if you post it in the actual comment section. How do I manage flies to get out of the viv? They just die over time. I don't really manage them really. Poster. See, I guess poster is really, really common actually. Which is interesting. I didn't think it would be I didn't think it would be as common as you guys said. But it's an idea. I'll definitely maybe work on a poster. I'll ask her maybe to make a poster design. But uh, we'll see. It's nothing yet. Um Cafe Press. Yeah, Cafe Press I might do. But I think what I'm going to do is end the stream here. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. I would Appreciate it. If you guys uh, left a like down below right now, that would be perfect. And uh, I don't think I missed any other super chats. Uh, again, thanks to Kaylin for the for the support. I preach. <sighs> yeah, so a lot of people want the poster. I might do that then. Maybe I'll do both. I'll just... I'll just do Teespring t-shirts and a poster. So it's definitely an idea. So I want to thank you guys all for watching. If you guys liked the video, please drop a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely leave those in the comment section. I try to reply to basically everything. I hope you guys like the live stream. I'm planning to do live streams every Sunday for the month of May uh, around the same time, 10 or 11 a.m. Uh, my time, obviously, that's mountain time in Canada. Uh, and if you guys, yes, Arizona, this is today's video. Uh, if you guys have any, uh, suggestions or whatever that you want to see on merch or, uh, designs that you'd like to see, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. I would appreciate it very much. And, uh, I want to thank you guys all for watching. This live stream went pretty well from the phone, so YouTube definitely must have done some tweaking, which is kind of nice. And, uh, yeah. From me to you, have a great rest of your weekend. I know it's Sunday, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching, you guys. Graphic Phoenix, out of here.